Earlier this month, the Biden administration reinstated a Trump-era immigration policy that just months before it had rescinded. Candidate Biden made tackling immigration reform central to his campaign platform. And it seemed like he made good on that promise when he signed an executive order on his first day in office, ending Trump's controversial remain in Mexico law. Fast forward now 11 months, and the policy is not only back, but it is now more expansive. This latest move has left many of us scratching our heads. Here to talk about this seemingly immigration political hot potato is Christina Imanez Moretta, a co-founder and former executive director of United We Dream, the largest immigrant youth-led organization in the country. Christina, welcome back to Amplified. I'm so excited to have you here break all this down for us because Biden made it clear that he wanted to end the inhumane policies of the last administration. But now it seems like he's changing course. So can you update us on the latest and why Biden and the Biden administration is keeping Trump's remain in Mexico policy, which was formerly known as migrant protection protocols? What, why are they keeping these alive? Great to be with you, Aisha. Um, and you are completely right. Um, Biden, in fact, harshly criticized Trump when Trump used this policy to keep uh, people who were seeking safety at our borders, fleeing violence, from utilizing and having access to their legal right to apply and request for asylum. And um, Biden actually criticized this policy, committed to end the policy, um, speaking about it in terms of being an inhumane and horrific policy that did not reflect our values as a country. So it's very mm. um, confusing and disappointing and outrageous that the Biden administration is now not only reinstating the policy, but also expanding the policy to deny more people, including uh, migrants and refugees from countries like Haiti and Jamaica, to be able to seek refuge and to apply for asylum in this country. So um, what we're seeing here, Aisha, is the general approach of trying to keep especially black and brown migrants from seeking uh, safety and applying for their legal right for asylum in the country. Mm. So I'm just so confused about how we got here with the rescinding. Did something happen? that forced this administration's hand to have to kind of backpedal on where they started on the first day? Listen, you know, Republicans and um, racist, white supremacists and anti-immigrants are also all on force to ensure that some of the Trump policies are staying in place. So as soon as the Biden administration uh, issued their decision that they will get rid of this policy, um, Republicans and conservatives attacked through the courts, and we know, um, you know, that many of the judges are conservative and hold very racist uh, ideologies. And of course, the courts blocked the Biden administration on being able to rescind the policy. But I have to say this, Aisha, the Biden administration has very capable people in the administration to think about other ways in which this policy could still be rescinded and can be uh, actually eradicated from how we're using it. And also, the court never said that the Biden administration needed to expand this policy to target more uh, black and brown immigrants. And what we are not talking about is the relationship between the remaining Mexico policy with also the Title 42 policy that many people woke up to when we saw the horrific images of Haitian refugees being whipped by Border Patrol agents at the border. This is all connected, Aisha. Under these two policies, mm -hmm. the Biden administration is not only denying people from their legal right to seek asylum, but is also expelling them from the country automatically in a matter of hours. So these folks do not even have the chance to seek legal help and to actually start processes uh, of asylum or refugee status. And the administration knows exactly that what happens to people mm. stuck in Mexico 
Mexico because of these policy is that these families and these folks who are fleeing already climate change, poverty, increased violence in their countries, um, and in places like Haiti, poverty and the impact of natural disasters, that remaining in Mexico means that these people are vulnerable to rape, to violation of human rights, to trafficking, and the Biden administration has the data and the information on this. So it is absolutely outrageous that we continue to see from the Biden administration a posture of uh, denying people from applying for uh, asylum and keeping uh, black mm. and brown people out of the country, which you know is a tone and a narrative and a policy that he actually committed to change and that he harshly criticized Trump about. Mm -hmm. You know, the thing that just seems like Groundhog's Day to me about so much of this is that every administration president is dealing with immigration. And it seems to me it's because, you know, clearly presidents can sign executive orders all day long. But unless Congress actually gets their act together, then no immigration reform is going to be set in stone. So each administration that comes in is going to try to like deal with the same challenges in whatever way that they see fit. So as the Senate crafts, <laughs> they're supposed to be crafting, the final version of the Build Back Better Act, what are the chances that immigration provisions will actually be addressed in that plan? And, and what might that look like? I agree with you, Aisha. I think, you know, Congress has to act. I also do not want to leave the Biden administration off the hook here and that they can do something to change the situation right now. They could stop using Title 42, they could stop using the remaining Mexican policy, and they could stop expelling people and denying them of their right to seek asylum. So there are things that the administration can do. And you're absolutely right. We're not going to get out of this um, issue on immigration without having permanent legislation that would address the complexity of what we're dealing with. And we actually have an opportunity now that Democrats are holding leadership in Congress to include immigration policy reforms, including uh, protections from deportation uh, and addressing asylum within Build Back Better, which is part of the conversations right now. But as we're seeing, Aisha, the conversation hasn't moved forward and we're yet to see Build Back Better will be voted on in the next few weeks. So mm -hmm. one of the things that I think is really important for the Biden administration and for Congress is that they must deliver in order for uh, people to really believe that the Biden administration and that Congress and that Democrats are delivering on the promises that they made, uh, of which, you know, it's why people voted for them, unless they can show that they're delivering on those, including immigration, including protections from deportation um, in, in the policy, like the Build Back Better package, we are just not mm. gonna, not only believe that Democrats can lead and deliver on the promises. It will create lots of problems for the midterms, but also the human impact. And we're having uh, yeah. the reality that millions of people in the U.S. and folks who are seeking refuge have been impacted by the very racist and hateful policies of the Trump administration. And folks want some relief and they want to see something different from the Biden administration, which is what he promised and is also what Congress and Democrats promise. So, you know, I think it will be a huge opportunity for mm. Democrats. It will be a strategic for them mm -hmm. to include this in Build Back Better and to pass it, not only because of immigration, but because you and I know, Aisha, it also includes other elements that are so important to right, the right, base of right. the Democratic Party, like yeah, health care, child about the politics care, of health. this, though, in the... And, and the last and the little bit of time we have left, because like you said, you alluded to the fact that Democrats need to deliver for the voters or the voters aren't going to deliver for them, essentially. And we are going into midterms now and Republicans are actually touting uh, this as a win for them that Biden was set back by the courts in some way and that now Biden's extending extending this policy and, and forcing people to stay in Mexico. Republicans are already using this as a campaign spiel that they're winning something, this return to the Trump era policies. How do you think that this is going to play out? And in your experience, how have these issues of immigration actually played out 
on the campaign trail? And what are we what should we be looking for as we approach midterms next year? Aisha, I in the past, what I've seen is actually Democrats failing on this issue time after time and failing voters. So my hope is that in this upcoming election and the fact that as a country, we are facing a tremendous threat with a growing white supremacist nationalist movement. Uh, we saw January 6th, we see these folks are organizing and serious about running candidates, about taking over institutions, eroding our democracy. So it's not just about immigration. This is about a struggle of who we are as a nation, who we want to be, and how do we want to actually protect and defend our democracy. And if Democrats and the Biden administration don't get that this is what we, what it, this is about, and that immigration is actually a central issue for Republicans, Democrats must lean in, mm. they must show leadership and deliver something different because Republicans are making this the issue. So if Democrats hide on immigration, we are going to see how mm. Republicans are really going to throw this to their base and energize their base. So what I say to Democrats is that this mm -hmm. is a huge opportunity to show people that they can be different, that they promised to change on immigration policy and that they could deliver on that. And the, and the voters will respond to those promises, uh, not only on immigration, but on other issues. But otherwise, we're risking really uh, terrible outcomes in the midterm election. Yeah. Yeah, well, let's hope that Congress actually gets its act together. Christina Manez Moretta, a co-founder and former executive director of United We Dream, and might I also add a MacArthur Genius Award winner. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Appreciate having you, as always, on Amplified.